I'm convinced more and more that uh, the Lord is trying to get our attention. And at the same time, the devil is working very hard to get us distracted. Um, even this weekend, you know, there's uh, Thanksgiving just happened. And of course, the big thing after Thanksgiving is Black Friday. And people are just consumed with getting good deals. And I'm not saying it's wrong if you got a good deal on Black Friday, but the devil's doing anything he can to just distract us as much as possible. Um, I want to just look at one verse here in Jude. It's just one chapter in Jude. And Jude starts off by saying that, you know, there's people who have crept in and uh, they weren't aware of them. They came into the into the church and they're not aware. And I'm not thinking of anyone or anything here, but he gives us a warning of um, three people in verse 11. And I'll just speak very, very briefly on this. Um, there's some good messages that I've heard on all three of these men here. But it says in verse 11, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for a reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. And um, um, I look at these three men and I look at, okay, what was Cain's problem? And if you just flip back probably just one page in your Bible, and in First John 3, um, John starts talking about the knowing who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. And it's just something real simple. He says in verse 10, this is how we know in the middle here. He says, Who, whoever does not do righteousness is not of God, neither is he that doesn't love his brother. And look what he says here. This is the message, verse 11, that you've heard from the beginning, that we shall love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And why did he slay him? It's because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. And I think, you know, the, just this one thing, you might think, well, I'm not Cain. I'm not slaying my brother. I'm not, I'm not ready to murder someone because they do something righteous. And I did something unrighteous. But <clears throat> that's one of those things I see that the, Lord, that the Lord's trying to get our attention. If you don't, if there's a lack of love in your heart, if you just find yourself that where you don't really love the brethren, um, and, you know, you come to church and we've heard Cain has had the spirit of, uh, like a religious spirit to himself because he did do offerings. Um, Cain knew to do that. But then when it came to love, it was something that he didn't have. And that's the message we heard from the beginning, what we just read, that we should love one another. And so maybe you come here or maybe you're online and you just find yourself really struggling with a lack of, uh, or you have a lack of love. Um, and that's just one of those things where, Jude says, you know, this, these are people that come in and someone comes into the church and they sit here or maybe you're home online listening and there's just no love. And that's just one thing that is, uh, again, that we need to pay attention to. Next, I read about uh, those who run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. If you remember back in Numbers where uh, Balaam was a prophet, and Balaam had a word to give. And then Bala comes and there's some money involved. And Balaam inquires of the Lord. And really, uh, Balaam inquired of the Lord again after he had been um, given this opportunity for money, for honor. And there was really no need to go to the Lord a second time. The, Balaam had already gotten the answer. But Balaam just had it in his heart that he was going to... He was going to... Um, well, it says he ran greedily after that error, which was, you know, the love of money, the love of honor. And these are things where you might even fool yourself and say, well, I have to use money. So what's so wrong with, um, you know, using money? But it's actually the love of money. And uh, think of, uh, like I just mentioned, you know, this weekend, how many people across this country are saying, oh, I'm going to get the best deal possible. And they spend hours and hours on their phones and they just keep on checking their phones for a deal or um and and they think well it's just you know I want to be wise with my money but no they're they're running greedily after materials but they're but they're kind of masking it by saying well it's I'm just I'm looking for a good deal and again please don't take that as me saying if you find a good deal on black friday that that's a bad thing that's not at all what I'm saying um 
But then he also had the love of honor, which is another thing that could creep in here. You know, I was telling someone, especially with the meals that we make here, I was telling someone recently that you would think that the, the people who uh, are the most likely to get proud about a, a dish that they make, just some food that they make, would be the ones that make the fanciest dishes. And then they said, but, you know, it's also the people who <laughs> maybe just microwave hot dogs or something where it's something real simple. And you could get proud thinking, well, I'm not proud like the person who made the fancy dish. Meanwhile, the person who made the fancy dish might be more humble than the person who microwaved hot dogs. But there's a love of honor that you might want to get from, oh, look at me, I just make hot dogs, <laughs> or whatever the case may be, or something real simple, um, or maybe Kraft mac and cheese, that's all I make, something, you know, nobody would really think anything of it like the other dish. But there's a love of honor that we're not paying attention to. And then I look lastly at, it says those that perished in the gainsaying of Korah. And I think back in number 16, if I look, let's just look at it real quick. This is something, I'll just close with this. Again, there's much, much more that could be said um, about these three men. But it's something the Lord laid on my heart about just paying attention to these things, things that we shouldn't just shrug off and say, well, you know, maybe I don't love the way I should, or maybe I do have a little bit of seeking honor. What's the big deal? Um, and here in number 16, we read uh, about these three men or four men, really, Korah, Dath, and Abiram, and on. And then they had gathered 250 other people with them. They had a ministry. And um, it says in verse 2, it says two hundred in the middle, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So these are people that would have had um, some recognition amongst the people of Israel. Verse 3, they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you lift yourself up above the congregation of the Lord? And I see that the 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 deception there, the rebellion there, where he said, well, what makes you think that you're any better than us, you know, to, to Moses? Um, and then, of course, Moses fell on his face, verse 4. And um, he tried to, to plead with them. But uh, if you find yourself with the gainsaying of Korah, where he, it wasn't just him, it may, might have started with him, but then he got other men, and then he drew 250 people, um, and, they, and they all started rebelling against Moses. And that ended in disaster because, you know, the story of the earth swallowed, uh, opened up beneath him. If you keep reading in number 16, opened up beneath them and swallowed them up. And um, I look at this, if Moses, it says, actually just a couple chapters before, it said that Moses was the most meek man, and yet they had the audacity to rebel against him, against this godly, humble man. And so if you find yourself with this critical eye towards uh towards people. I don't even want to just say towards leadership or towards elders or anything, just towards people. You have a critical eye. Um, you know, that's a very destructive thing as we see here. God took that very seriously. So these are some things the Lord was laying on my heart. If you find yourself with any of this, um, again, thinking of Cain, just a lack of love, or you may not think it's a big deal because I have a lack of love. What's the big deal? Um, and then you you think of uh, Balaam having a love of money and a love of honor and Korah, no respect, rebellion, a critical eye, critical thoughts constantly towards each other. What's the big deal about this? And these are the things I was, I'm saying where the enemy's trying to distract us and the Lord's trying to get us to pay attention to these things. These are not just minor things. These are, these are a big deal. And these are the things that Jude said, I, I feel like I have to write the church about about um, these things entering into the, the local body. So if you find and find yourself with any of these things, it's there's a very simple thing that the Lord uh, closes Revelation with, or, or when he's speaking to the churches, he says, repent. Amen. I've been um, thinking about the expression that Jesus used in John 21 when he was speaking to Peter. 
uh, this was after they just had breakfast. They'd come, come to shore, and Jesus was in the process of restoring Peter, verse 18. Um, and he had already asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And Peter had said yes each time. And when he asked him the third time, Peter was sad. And then Jesus said, uh, verse 18, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. And I was thinking about that first part. That was such an accurate description of, of what Peter was like. You were young and used to dress yourself and do whatever you wanted. A strong-willed young man. You know, when you're young, sometimes you feel you feel invincible. You feel unstoppable. You have this um, desire within you, even if it's a good desire to do the right thing, to be led, to not be led, but to already have a plan. And that's what Peter was. And for some reason, Peter didn't think the cross was a good idea. And when Jesus said that he was going to the cross, Peter said he started to rebuke him. And then I was thinking how in the garden when um, when the soldiers and the officers came, came to arrest Jesus, Peter was so strong in his mind that he thought he could take on all the soldiers. He pulled out a sword and actually uh, was the first one to make a move, not even the soldiers. They were just waiting to find out who Jesus was. And it's amazing that Jesus is saying here that, that that's exactly where you're going to go. John says in, in verse 19 that he was talking about the kind of death that he would glorify God with, that Peter didn't want Jesus to go to the cross, but Jesus was saying, no, you will go to the cross yourself. And not just the way that he would die. In the second part of verse 18, Jesus said, You will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. And the contrast of a young man who was so strong and was so determined on how he was going to serve God is, is a picture of a little child that's been in my mind. Um, not even a three-year-old, because my three-year-old has now started wanting to put on her own boots. This morning she was like, I'll put on my own dress but maybe a one-year-old who can't dress himself or herself. And I, I don't know if you've ever noticed a one-year-old, if you bring a shirt near it, near him or her, they'll just raise their hands and then you have to put it on them. And that's the picture the Lord has been giving me of, of a little child who doesn't know how to dress itself, um, doesn't try to predict what the weather is going to be like, what kind of clothes do I need this day, but rather just stretches out its hand and says, Lord, you clothe me. And a picture of the Holy Spirit that I'm not strong, but I don't have a plan in mind. I don't know how I'm going to serve God or not with my own strength, but Lord, that you will clothe me and then I will walk in the way that you have for me. Not, I don't have a plan on, on what Jesus should do or what I'm going to do, but, but I'll let you tell me what I should do. Um, I was thinking practically, practically for myself every day when I wake up, I want to have this attitude of Lord um, I want to take up my cross this day, but but I don't have a plan. Um, I don't have, this is not, I don't have a way that I'm going to follow you today, but I'd rather be like this little child that comes to you and raises its hand and says, Lord, you clothe me with your power, give me your strength, and then you take me the way that I should go. And after saying all of that, Jesus said to, uh, Jesus said to Peter, end of verse 19, follow me. Um, and I was thinking of Luke 9, 23, where Jesus said, If any man wants to follow me, he should deny himself, take up his cross, um, and follow me. And basically that's what he was telling Peter, that you, you're, you're such a strong-willed man, you have so many ideas on how to do things, on how to serve me, but can you just be like that little child? Um, just take up your cross and just raise your hands and I will clothe you with my power, with my spirit, and then I will lead you where you should go, to the way of the cross, like we heard this morning. And, and then you will honor me, and then you will glorify me. Amen.